Hi, my name is Carl from 2654E, and in this video I'm going to touch on some of the techniques I use to design polycarbonate, um, including how to do configurations, and just the general way I design stuff. Um, yeah, let's get into it. First things first, you can see all the polycarbonate parts on the robot. All of these parts, not a single one, um, is designed in this document. Instead, they're all designed in separate documents um, found in the same folder as the robot. So every time I want a new polycarbonate part on the robot, I'm making a new document and making a sketch and extruding that sketch to get the part. After that, I can save the model um, to the folder right here and insert that component into the design. Although this might seem a little unintuitive at first, it has several advantages and I'll go over those right now. The first huge thing is it allows you to access configurations um, and that's super huge for when you have multiple similar parts like on the side panels here or on the hooks here. Multiple parts that have a lot of similarities, you can use configurations to get those similarities um, very well. Another huge advantage is when you're exporting polycarbonate or making a layout, you can create separate documents. So I have a polycarbonate layout right here, and I can insert these components into those documents in a very similar fashion in order to achieve that. Um, and another really nice advantage is you can copy parts between robots you can insert multiple of them into the same design and it's just a lot less prone to failure because it's not referencing anything in the current document like for instance if i wanted to switch this three wide c or this two wide c channel out with a three wide c channel it might have had a failure if i based the sketch for these parts on that c channel but because I did it in an external document, there's not going to be any impact from changing something in the main design. So I'll just open up um, one of these here. Let's do this one. So this is the hook that we used for hanging. It had a couple different purposes it needed to link to the upright, to the diagonal, all of that. And the way this is designed once again is with a sketch. Um, but the, what's unique about how I designed this part is there's actually multiple different parts, I suppose, in this one sketch. So you can see we have the main hook, but over here you can see there's this additional part to hold the, hold the motor here. So this hole, this hole, and this hole, I suppose, are all to hold the motor for the Lady Brown. None of these are needed on the side without the motor. So I have this line here that kind of just phases out. So you can see I'm kind of sketching multiple. And by fully defining multiple shapes within one sketch, you're able to extrude them differently. I'll just show real quick. By extruding that sketch differently, you can achieve different parts. And the way I'm able to change it right now is because of the configuration tool. So pretty much to start um, a configuration like this, you would do all of your extrusions, you'd make an extrusion, you'd extrude just the profiles you want to be in one of your configurations. You'd make sure it's set to new body instead of join, because that way it won't attach to some of the um, other profiles or other parts you've already made and once you've done that you can click OK and do it for all the parts that you want again make sure you're clicking new body so the parts don't link together after that you can come up to the configuration menu and add different configurations by just adding this button then once you have all that you can go down here to your timeline you can click configure feature and that'll bring you up here and it'll add that feature 
to the menu. And I normally do suppression based configurations. So that's basically suppressing the feature when you don't need it, depending on what part. And you can obviously adjust how that is. Um, so what what's actually being suppressed and that allows you to essentially choose which extrusion you're using based on the part and that'll just all become linked together so you can see depending on which part i'm on there's a different extrusion um and yeah that's just super helpful so i can change which part i'm on um, but yeah there's all that and then if i change something in the main sketch like the obviously this is pretty specified now but if i make that 1.5 instead of 1.3 um you'll see that change propagates to all of the other ones so we have that configuration and this configuration both got altered by just changing that one sketch so that'll be um very very important if you have these complicated parts and you have um them related to each other because then when I go back to the main document right here all of the um, these parts you can see if I scroll down into the timeline where they all are so you can see that I have the hook the hooks on the left side the hooks on the right side and they all are out of date because I changed just that one sketch. And by clicking this yellow button up there, you're able to update those components uh, so that all of the changes you just made to the previous document propagate into your uh, main CAD model. And yeah, as I mentioned, that's just super good if you have multiple parts that use similar geometry and you want them to change with each other. Instead of having to go to three separate documents, I just went to one document, one sketch, and everything else adjusted very easily. I used the same thing for the side panel here. You can see there's three parts that are tied together. And yeah, just adjusting one of them would be super easy and it would adjust the rest of them at the same time. Another really big benefit of using uh, configurations, excuse me, is these bends or sheet metal parts. So this part I made to have a ring lock for the Lady Brown, but you can see there's two configurations for it, one for 2D and one for 3D. You want a 2D configuration when you're trying to export the part, you're laser cutting it, you're CNCing it, all that, you're gonna want the 2D configuration. Um, that's gonna let you make layouts of the part for inspectors, uh, so you can see like there, all of these are 2D profiles. And then obviously when you, want to put it on the robot it needs to be 3d so the way i did that is again with configurations um i have a sheet metal feature this time and by configuring that feature and having the suppression be the um i guess thing that's linked to the new configuration you can see that by altering that um, that feature by suppressing and unsuppressing it you're able to modify what the part looks like. Very similar with the old one, just with a slightly different feature. And I think this feature of using the sheet metal and those type of configurations will end up being very helpful in this year's game because of the um, plastic rules. So you could get away with making a part, say, with um, that's kind of a doubled up part, folding it in half, and you get a double thick polycarbonate part that only counts as one, one part with the rule. And then the next thing I'll talk about in this video is how I do my layouts and export everything. So you can see I have just a body here, the, this one. So that was just made by making a sketch, extruding that sketch and then you have a plane to rearrange all of your parts on. 
if I want to add a part or subtract a part, I can go up here, insert it into the design. If I want to delete a part, I can just delete it. Um, so then you can make that layout for inspection. I'm not sure if they'll end up changing the rule this year, but if you don't, it's still helpful. If you want to laser cut or CNC parts, you would go through a very similar process of putting them all in this one document and then exporting this file. Um, and now to actually talk about exporting. So you have your design here, you click drawing from design. And what that's going to do is bring up this menu here for your drawing. You normally want to click a D size sheet at least if you're doing the standard 12 by 24 polycarbonate. Um, click OK. And that'll allow you to make a one to one scale on the menu here. So that's going to make sure everything is proper. You'll make sure you'll select this correct side view here and then click OK. And yeah, there, there it is on your drawing. And to make this drawing usable for the software that you have to have, you need to export it as a DXF. Um, and then most G code softwares will accept a DXF and then you'll be able to make your toolpaths and all that from there. Um, and then real quick, I'll just show this layout again. So this is another thing you can do by making that layout. Just have some really nice technical sheets here with all your all your parts. This might be helpful this year as you're only limited to 12 parts. So you could kind of have a list there um, and show what's what. And yeah, it's just pretty nice for inspection and also really good in the notebook. Well, yeah, I think that's pretty much all to cover with the polycarbonate parts. Uh, if I miss something, feel free to ask below or shoot me a message and I'll be happy to answer.